So I have been playing Far Cry 5 this weekend, complete with one of the sub-bosses, John Seed, doing his invisible horse hand. I never get tired of invisible blank memes like invisible bike, invisible car, things like that. They always make me laugh, especially when they're cats. Um, I know they're stupid, but they make me laugh. Um, but I wanted to, I figured, hey, I'm playing it. I'll show you guys some gameplay. This is not going to be a review. This is just going to give you guys a sampling of the gameplay so that you can see the game as the ga as a game instead of the obsession over the themes and plots. And Joseph is the main villain, the big bad in this game. That's why the sign is swearing at him. Uh, because this town has been reclaimed. It is free. Yay. Um, but I wanted you to see some gameplay so that you can get a sense of it while I talk about other things. This is the trade-off I have to make on this channel because straight up reviews don't do well for me. Anyway, people prefer my topic based stuff. And uh, so you can guys just have a look. Rabid Bobblehead patrons will get a full review because, hey, they pay me for content. And uh, that that group seem they they are core gamers they're they're not they they actually like the deep dives so that's how we're going to work it um if you want the review become a patron a buck a month that's all it costs yeah for for cool reviews about actually games to talk about gameplay and not just obsess over narrative theme because games are not movies games are not books games are not tv shows games are games so just Watch the gameplay, watch how much you can do. This is only a small sampling, but uh, you know, I, I find the world very immersive and you'll see a few funny things along the way while I talk. Cause the topic today is, is something that's really not so funny in a few ways. Uh, quite a few people mentioned the bully hunters thing to me. I looked into it, I found it distasteful. So I did not watch the complete thing. I got a sense, uh, I don't want to get into the muck on things like, you know, impersonating bullied people and the, the sheer questionable morality of profiting off of real people's pain by creating this spectacle that got a lot of press that, trust me, is not easy to get in games when you're doing s content about games instead of get like even indie games have trouble getting press and you know uh, something that was potentially fraudulent got attention and i can't get press attention from places like polygon and kotaku so i'm gonna stay away from that because it pisses me off and i'm not objective on that point i want to talk about um the idea of bullying and the entire concept that somehow you can strike back against bullies by being a good player in a game and going in and killing them in game. Um, I'm sure you can tell by my tone of voice what I think about that concept, but I want to tell you why, because I think it fundamentally misunderstands, perhaps deliberately, perhaps not, what bullying is. Okay. In gaming, Bullying, and I'm going to use the term bullying instead of harassment because harassment is a specific thing. It's a pattern of unwanted, uncomfortable contact. So, you know, you'll, you'll hear somebody say, oh, reporter's harassing me. Well, that doesn't mean the reporter's doing anything illegal. It just means the reporter won't leave them alone, right? It's a pattern of contact after you've told someone, stop, leave me alone. You shouldn't harass people unless it's your job, like a, a political reporter. Um, that was, this is double takedown, so the hostage survived, but then, for some odd reason, I spaced, and something funny happens. But, um, the, that, that's not what we talk about when we talk about harassment in gaming, so I'm just gonna say bullying, because that's what it is. And here's the derp, we're right over my tractor, and you get to see boomers revive ability of the doggy this is super useful in parts of the map like this where there's not much cover for wide stretches um i really like boomer for various reasons one he's a he, he's a doggo and uh also he's very useful 
He also auto spots enemies for you, which is super nice. But um, back to bullying. Often bullying, actual bullying, is confused for trash talk, which I think is definitely part of competitive culture, like competitive gaming culture, because it's part of competitive sports in general. There is an element of trash talk. I'm most familiar with it through basketball, just because that's, if I, if I could choose to watch a sport, basketball, I used to play it. So uh, that's a sport I tend to watch. But uh, so I'm most familiar with that. But it, it's an element. You, you try to get in the opposing team's head through, through trash talk. And I mean, guys like, you know, Michael Jordan were masters of that game. But, oh, by the way, here's what some Outrage Warriors would like to do to me. Two on the nose? I thought it was funny. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's an element. It's a psych out. You know, these guys are making millions of dollars. When you're just playing rec league, you discourage that. You try to teach sportsmanlike conduct that's, that's part of being part of team sports, not just well, any sports. It's not about being, you know, getting used to losing, but it's also winning well, Thanks being dignified in winning. And yeah, I, I cut ahead because it was stretches and stretches and stretches of road. It was boring here. So you're not imagining it. That's the same sign. But um, the, the difference between trash talk and bullying is there's sort of established limits of some, some places you don't go. The big one I know in, in the NBA before was homophobic comments. It was considered acceptable at one point. Now it's not. The cultural norms change because they realize that that's, that cuts deeper than just rattling someone. That that actually hurts, you know? And, and that's, trash talk is not intended to hurt. There's a difference between trying to throw someone off, trying to distract someone, and actually trying to cause lasting damage to their psyche, right? You're not trying to destroy the self-esteem of, you know, another professional player. Bullying's not like that. Bullying is, for the most part, a deliberate attempt to wear a person down. Bullies will justify it to themselves. But um, unintentional bullying, bullying that lacks self-awareness, is in the minority. I brushed up on my reading before I talked about this because I wanted to make sure I got that right. Um, bullying is definitely about intent. And intent is very difficult to discern over the internet. That's a mistake a lot of people make. They try to read intent into things to the point that I'm actually concerned, but I'm gonna leave that particular topic for another time. It's a big one to unpack on its own. So bullying uses power the same way this cult in, in Far Cry 5 has power in this area. And they use it to coerce, manipulate, threaten the local population into, into submission, into subservience. They take their land, they take their food. Now this skunk, on the other hand, is just minding his own business. So when he gets pissed off at me and, and comes at me, bro, he is not bullying me. <laughs> he freaking pwned me right there, poor skunk. But he's not bullying, he was minding his own business, he was defending himself. And so what we're supposed to believe if we accept this bully hunters thing as a sincere if misguided attempt, and I'm not saying you should, just let's go benefit of the doubt here. Um, what they are trying to claim is that you can correct a malevolent power imbalance through being better at a video game than someone. Does this make sense to you? It does not make sense to me. The uh, pe people who are just trying to ruin someone's day in video games, I found, 
aren't especially interested in playing well. They don't tend to be the best players to begin with. They tend to be mediocre to not so good. And I think that's part of the reason they, they get so nasty is they want to be better than they are. And they're a little bit embarrassed that they're better. And that's that's consistent with um, them with workplace bullying, actually. Sorry, I had to scratch my ear. It got itchy if you heard something there. Um, but that that's consistent with workplace bullying, the people who tend to get bullied at work. And, and a quarter of American workers have been bullied at work at some point, uh, according to, you know, statistics, which are self-reported. So take that, you know, as you will. But that's the number. Um, the people who tend to be targets for bullies are people who are very good at their job. If somebody's just a bad player, you don't really have to bully them. You may tell them they suck, which is rude, but, you know, you don't necessarily want to run them out of the game. You want people to shoot at, you know, a lot of people want to not be the worst player in a match. It doesn't make any sense that going in there and, and like, you know, doing like a revenge kill is actually going to do anything. I loved that. Cougar. Um, but it confuses what's going on in the game and the sort of unsportsmanlike conduct that's happening around the game. And they're not the same thing at all. They're, they're collapsing meat space and cyberspace or the real world um in terms of meat space i prefer meat space uh because the internet's very real for a lot of people oh, kitty. um but uh no matter how good you are in a game if someone picks an emotional scab if someone hits on a sore spot it's gonna hurt. Being good at a game doesn't make that better. Um, so the idea that gaming dominance is going to alter their behavior at all, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It, it gets them paid by a headphone company, which is, you know, that's why people start questioning motives because I, I don't know what these experts, these so-called experts who were involved in this thing, uh, were thinking, participating in it, because bullying is not as simple as if they hit you, hit them back. That was the old thing you used to tell kids when kids were allowed to hit each other in school. Um, can't do that anymore. But that's what, you know, I was told as a kid. If somebody hits you, hit them back. And, you know, I learned from first-hand experience, the, the people that actually try to hit you tend to be bigger than you. Because as a, uh, as a UK friend of mine pointed out, nobody goes for the biggest guy in the bar in a bar fight, right? So, you know, when I was in the sixth grade, a guy hit my sister, and so I stood up to him, and you know what he did? He rammed my head into a brick wall. And could I stop him? No, because... He probably wasn't literally twice my size, but at the time, he seemed twice my size. He was a big dude. He was a, a couple years older than me. And that's how bullying works. They do things to you. They take things from you and you can't stop them. And the authority figure in this scenario is not another player who just, oh, you racked up a kill. Great, awesome. That changes what exactly? They're not, they're not, if they were really interested on their game, they wouldn't be distracting themselves looking to be little shits to other people. That's fun for them, more than excelling at the game is, probably because they don't think they'll ever be good enough to actually play well. Because that is a dynamic of bullying. People are, are jealous of skills, and instead of trying to up their game, they try to tear down yours. The authority figure in that case who could do anything about it would be the maker of the, the game, the Montana person who manages the community, who has the ability to actually ban the player. And this is difficult because, you know, in most circumstances, 
you, you know, people just take out another account and they're off to the races again. Again, they're not terribly interested in stats and stuff like that. So it's a challenge. I do think game companies could be doing more than they are right now. And they're, they're starting to get more on the ball with things. But this isn't a moral question. This is a question of our games, and in this case, especially multiplayer games, getting fewer consumers than they could be getting were the experience more pleasant for the average player instead of just the, the top players and the people who want to mess around and just be little jerks. Now, what can people who aren't game company, you know, muckety mucks do? if they see somebody be being bullied in a game. Or anywhere, as the case may be. And, and this is really established. This is really established best practices, which is why I was so surprised to hear that they were experts in uh, involved in this bully hunters thing. I didn't see anyone involved as being especially an expert, because experts on bullying no, the, the, the studies show that the behavior of bystanders is the, the most important thing after it happens. You know, what that means in, in plain terms is, and I'm sure you've had periods of that in your life, you know, where the, you, somebody intimidates you and you're freaked out by it and somebody starts telling you everything you did wrong and everything you should be doing, it makes you feel like garbage. You're, you're still processing. You're not ready to go there yet. You've, it, it, in a situation of true bullying, it doesn't matter what you did. They would have find, found something to pick on. Now imagine if someone instead went, that guy's just a jerk. Are you okay? and let you talk about it and be honest you don't have to pretend that it didn't hurt you don't have to suck it up you can actually be an authentic human being for five minutes that's what helps that's what they've actually found mitigates the psychological damage bullying bullying causes just let the person talk let the person express their feelings get frustrated feel bad you know actually have emotions because emotional suppression is quite harmful in the in the long run and and the dynamic of someone who's bullied it involves a lot of sucking it up like not showing not saying what you really want to say at that moment or not being able to avoid your reaction and, and then getting reprimanded by a boss who doesn't get it and doesn't realize that you were reacting not acting there, there's a lot of misunderstandings regarding this sort of psychology because quite frankly for many years based on you know the the more advanced science now that we can actually scan the brain the the philosophy that was driving our entire idea of the cognitive emotional relationship meaning that the 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 relationship between your thoughts and your feelings for thousands of years, because it goes back to Aristotle, for thousands of years, great minds actually had it backwards. The idea that, that thinking could control feelings, could actually, uh, thinking can frame feelings, that's true. That's why cognitive behavioral therapy helps a lot of people. But it can't stop a feeling because feelings happen faster than thoughts. And of course, your perception of events changes how you feel about an event long term but those those instantaneous reactions those those immediate emotional responses those you you can't control and that's why you know micro expression uh science and and things like that you know the the, the little flashes of emotion that read on a person's face that happens so quickly they're very very hard to fake that's why that works. That's why, you know, professional investigators and professional interrogators use those to figure out what's really going on with a person because 
no matter what you tell yourself, you do have feelings and things do hurt. There are things that make you feel good and things that make you feel not so good. And you may be very, very, very good at hiding those things, but that doesn't mean those things don't exist. And we have an issue with gaming especially because people in computers, people in you know anything technical are seen first and foremost as being smart. And we have this, what I call the Vulcan stereotype, that being smart means you're not emotional. You're supposed to be stoic and, and always logical and all that stuff. And every, every single person has feelings. Every single person. And, you know, especially with, with the number of neuroatypical people in, uh, ooh, the wind really picked up there. It's the weather's bad today, guys. Sorry. Um, but especially with the number of neuroatypical people in gaming, being authentic about feelings is extra important because, you know, neuroatypical people don't have the same assumptions about things as neurotypical people do. And it's incredibly important, therefore, to be authentic about responses and emotions and what you're thinking and what you're feeling so that we can understand each other. Um, if uh, Most people are quite familiar with dealing with people with autism, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where they may not understand a reaction at first, but once you explain it to them, they get it and they care. They don't want to upset people. They just don't realize what they're doing is upsetting. So... This is, this is a unique challenge in gaming just because of that uh, neurotypicality gap. But I think that gives us an opportunity to make us better and actually do community better because it forces us to be better. You know, this is what we mean when we talk about diversity being strength. We... Part of the issue with gaming is that we do have that unique challenge. If it happens online, you don't see, ah, stupid snake. Uh, you don't see facial expressions. So even neurotypical people sometimes have trouble knowing what's really going on. I know there's plenty of people out there who accuse me of being angry all the time when I'm just joking around and I've, I've gotten to the point of putting laugh emojis on everything and I hate it. My, my Twitter timeline looks like a Taylor Swift fan's timeline lately because it's all laugh, laugh, LOL, heart, you know, because I'm, no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad. I think it's an element of projection as well, but, you know, I had to alter my way of doing things because people were making negative assumptions about me. We really got to watch the assumptions in gaming. And I think that's a real issue at the core of this quote unquote bullying thing. The people immediately jump to nefarious intent instead of uh, just examining the behavior and, and, trying to figure out how to make it better for everybody and it's funny because in kids they actually advocate if a kid's being a bully don't call the kid a bully because that's a label and when kids are that young it actually like brands them they're like I'm a bully and they stop trying to do better like it defines them it's, it's interesting that really surprised me it's like oh okay um you have to deal you have to do empathy exercises and deal with what well, would you like that if someone did it to you you know then why'd you do it to another person sort of thing you, you got to watch the labels and i think the other thing that gaming has is a lot of people who dealt with severe childhood trauma they don't trust people so they find games safe um and so there are there are people who may be 40 years old but Emotionally, they're in a state of arrested development from whenever the trauma happened, and that can be as young as nine or ten. I, I see that a lot online.
it takes a while to sort of get my head around that. Um, and some unpleasantness has resulted accordingly because you think you're dealing with an adult. Emotionally, you're not. And so, you know, because of that, the same techniques that you'd use with children apply. And I actually think they're, they're good techniques for anyone, even people who are, um, you know, they, who have healthy development. I instead of labeling things, just focus on what's going on and like be, be your, your brother, sister and siblings keeper, right? Like just, if you think someone is coming across in a way they don't intend, tell them gently. Um, feeling people don't like being told they're being mean when they had no intention to be mean because of that empathy. People do this to me all the time. Oh, you were mocking or oh, you were being mean or oh, you were taunting them. It's like, how about you tell me what I did and then I'll try to, f I'll let you know what my intent was there. Cause you can't possibly know. And I don't know what you're talking about. And you know, for, for whatever reason, and I, I think it's because a lot of learning is done through a negative feedback loop. So people who are book smart, they're stuck in this, this cycle of constant correction. It's like verbal electroshock therapy all the time. You know, they, they focus on the errors because they think they have to be better, smarter, faster than anyone else. So what they get right doesn't matter. Only their mistakes do. And, and that, you'll crash and burn thinking that way. As somebody who used to do it, as somebody who was a horrible perfectionist because I was defined by being smart, you know, I got, you know, I'd get 98% on a test and my mother would say, gee, where's the other two marks? It... And there's there's a there's a, a an example of this was something she was doing. You know, she says she didn't intend to be hurtful doing it. I think she was intimidated by having a, a very intelligent kid, and it came out that way. And you know. As, as somebody who comes from a family who isn't the best at talking about feelings, I recognize how important it is because it's a skill I had to learn completely on my own. There was nothing in the home that, that uh, taught it to me. And I suspect that because a lot of us are nerds here, other people have that same dynamic going on. And so we, protect our own feelings at all costs and that makes us very reactive to others and so I think if we really want to address this subject of bullying we should all just keep that in mind and be gentler with each other none of this bullying the bullies or hunting the bullies or what a horrible metaphor you know you know what happens when you fight fire with fire you get more fire you want to put out the fire, you have to use a fire extinguisher. You, I, I say this all the time, you know, you can't lessen aggression with aggression. You can't lessen hate with hate. You have to lessen aggression with understanding and you have to lessen hate with kindness. And yeah, I just shot the TV because I don't like that guy. And uh, I broke my own rule there. But uh, <sighs> That's, that's what I have to say. And I know it's not a straight up critique. I know it's a tangent, but that's because I'm trying to be kind here. I could sit here and roast the people that did that show rather effectively. I chose not to. I chose to present the facts and make something productive out of what was essentially a shit show. And I think that if, if we are more productive and more proactive in this way, then people won't feel the need to go negative. Everybody will be having fun and, and, you know, people won't be hiding behind so many powerful insecurities because they'll be more secure. That's just my theory. I could be completely wrong, but I think it's worth trying just because we know this bullying the bully stuff doesn't work. 
That's why parents stopped telling their kids, if they hit you, hit them back. You know what happens when you hit them back? They just hit you harder. Trust me. As someone who's been there, they just hit you harder. So I'm going to wrap here. That was an hour. That was a half hour of Far Cry 5 gameplay. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.